Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi. Bechiras Daf Yud Beis, we are holding right on top of the Mishnah. So the Pasuk speaks of being paid, redeeming a firstborn donkey, a petah with a se. The se category covers sheep and goats, says the Mishnah. That's the only thing you can use. In poiding with the eagle, you can't do the pidyon with an eagle, a calf, from the cow family. Or another type of chayan, undomesticated, deer, etc. Like it has to be alive, not shechted. nor can one use an animal which is severely injured to the point that it's called a trefa. nor can one use a cross crossbred animal, even if both parents were considered. Uh, Se, as she says, a tayish, bred with a Rachel, so the goat with a sheep. This offspring, since it's Kalaim, it's not purely either goat or sheep. Unsuitable. Well, I kvi, nor a kvi, which is a crossbreed between Behema and Achaya. Rebbe a matabe Kalaim. He says Kalaim is okay. If Neshu is Se, because ultimately he's from the Se family. Whether it's on account of his father or mother, it's either sheep or goat, it qualifies. But he agrees that a kvi is off limits. Because that has an element of both. It's part this, it's part that, right? It's part chaya, part behemoth. Concludes the Mishnah. Let's say the owner decides, you know what? Why bother doing the pidyon? Let me just give the entire chamar to the kain. Let him deal with it. The son of the kain, fine. If he did that, but, but the kain cannot partake in it until he actually makes the pidyon. You see, the Beit HaChamar belonging to a Yisrael requires pidyon. You can't just give him the actual Beit HaChamar and done with it. Eina kain rasha the kain, the kain can't keep it, actually yafesh setacht until he sets aside the, you know, the se, does the pidyon, and now it all stays in his hands. So the Mishnah stipulates that you can only use a, a se for a pidyon as opposed to an eagle, a chaya, a kalayim, etc. Mas nisan mani, who's speaking in our Mishnah? Ben Bagbag, he must be Ben Bagbag. Who holds of these halachos, the sanim, Bagbag Eimer. We have a zero shav, a connection between the word se stated over here in our context, and the word se stated by Karban Pesach, Nemar Khan se, Nemar Lahalon se, right, so we connect the two, just like, Ma <coughs> Lahalon, just like by Karban Pesach, Prat, Luchal Hashem all these types are excluded, you can't bring a shechted uh, piece of meat for Karban Pesach, you have to shecht it for, the sake of Karban Pesach, so it has to be alive, it cannot be kalayim, which is not suitable as a carbon, etc., etc. Likewise, over here, Afkan, likewise by the Se of Petr Hamor, Prat, Lashemois, Luchal Shemus, Hashemus, Halalu, we exclude all these different types. So we require a Se which uh, hails either from Kvasim or from Izim, alive, healthy, etc. So as the Gemara, if you can compare, compare all the way, if that's the case, and just like over there by Karim Pesach, it's not sufficient to have the type, the type of animal. There are gender requirements, age requirements, it has to be unblemished. Are you going to apply the same halachis to Petach Amor? Zohar, Tamim, Ben Shana, male, unblemished, within a year of birth, Afkan, the same over here, you're going to require Zohar Tamim ben Shana? And clearly we don't. Why? Tamalim, the answer is Tifta, Tifta. The Pasuk repeats the word Tifta twice. Look in the Pasuk, it says Tifta Besed again, to cover even these additional variations. Tifta, Tifta, Reba. Oh, if you're expanding it, then expand it to even Chaya. E Tifta, Tifta, Reba, if you're going to apply it and expand it to other things, I feel called Haninam, so include all the other items as well. Why limiting it at all? 
If that's the case, if there are no limitations at all, then what's the point of the Xerah Shavah And Rashi explains, so why do we prefer these requirements over those? Um, Mustafar says Rashi, makes sense to exclude the uh, The Chaya, the Kalayim, the Shechta, these aren't at all considered a, a Seh. But something which is really a Seh, a sheep or a goat. Even though he doesn't you know, conform to the specifics of carbon Pesach, age, gender, blemish, and that's okay, close enough. Iboy, now comes a new question. What about an unborn animal discovered inside the mother after Shkita? Ben Pekua. Okay, fully developed. Can we use that sheep or goat for a pidyan petach amar? Now, I'll leave it to Rameyel to There's no question according to Rameyel that it works. Why? The Kivan, the Amar Meyel, since Rameyel teaches us back in Tafayin Dalit. Ben Pekua to Shkita. Even this... Uh, Fully developed fetus found inside the mother after shechita requires its own shechita. Apparently, semaldi was considered a full-fledged, complete, standalone animal, and it's suitable for pidyon petachamar as well. Elokiti boilechim derabon. The question will apply to the rabban. Damri who say that a ben pekua is exempt from his own shechita. Shechita is imay mitaras. The shechita of his mother accommodates the offspring as well. How do we relate to this offspring? Like an animal, or perhaps just like a a cut of meat inside a basket, the mother's animal. Kibisra, like a piece of meat with the cool dam inside a basket, is he like? Or Dilma, or you can say, Kivin the hashed, and therefore it's not suitable for pidyon. It's like a chunk of meat inside the mother. Or Dilma, Kivin the hashed, to be a roid vassal. On the other hand, look. Look at him now. He's running around. Walks like a goat, talks like a goat. Roid vassal. He's running, moving around. Se Karinavi, perhaps. He does earn the title Se and can be used. So, which way? Halachically, in which case it's just a piece of meat, part of the mother, mother's animal, or in fact is he appears like an animal on his own, a live being, and it could be used. So which way? He says, ain't poison, you can't use it. He's like a limb of the mother. Ravashi, you can use it. He's his own animal. What's wrong? My daita. Where are you coming from? The Alphas from Pesach. It must be that you're learning from Karim Pesach. Where? Rashi explains. Even Pekua is unsuitable. You know why? Rashi says because we have a Pasach. Ki valid. He has to be born properly. Prat as opposed to Liyotzei Doifein. An animal born by Caesarean or certainly if it was discovered inside the mother post Shrita. And since it's not good for Pesach, it's not good for us? Well, if you compare it to Pesach, match it all the way. And require all those requirements as well. Gender, age, etc. Ima lahalan. Zachar, Tomim, Uben Shana. If you can have all those requirements there, the same should apply here. Afghan, Zachar, Tomim, Uben Shana. And certainly you don't require these uh, requirements. Well, Tifta, Tifta, Riva. We have that additional Tifta to include even other types. Well, if you're going to include others, I feel Ben Pekua, I'm include Ben Pekua as well. Why are we discriminating between this and the others? In Cain says, If all is covered, then what's the point of connecting it to Karim Pesach? And Rashi says, It makes sense to exclude Ben Pekua because it's like he's shechted and no longer regarded as his own seh, as opposed to including, you know, Baal Mum, Nekeva, a two-year-old, ultimately, they're, they're considered set. There's nothing inherently wrong in terms of classification. It makes more sense to include them and to exclude this one. Iboilu, now comes a new question. A brand new question. What about a nidme? Nidme comes from the word doima, compare. He doesn't, comp- he doesn't appear like his mother animal. We had this the other day, right? Regarding Bechoira, firstborn kosher animal, if he doesn't appear like his mother, completely not like his mother, He's totally not Kaddish. He appears somewhat like his mother he is. We have a Pasuk by Karbanis as well. 
An offspring which appears different than his mother is not Kaddish for Karbanais. Okay? So what about using a Nidme for Pidim Petachamur? So he is a sheep. But he looks like a goat. Meaning his mother is a sheep, but he looks like a goat. Now back to the Mishnah. Let's take a look. Rabbi Leza says, even a true Kalayim, which is a real crossbreed between a sheep and a goat is okay. According to him, there's no question. That in this case, where mother is sheep and offspring is sheep, and if mother and father are both sheep, just offspring looks a bit different, it's merely appearance. It's not inherently a different type. There's no question that works. There's no question here. Hashtab Kalayim Parakin, if you can redeem with real Kalayim, a true crossbreed with Nidman, but obviously with Nidman, of course it's okay. Kiti Bailach, your question will apply to the Rabbanon to the Rabbanon. But Kalayim, who do I Parakin, who say Kalayim doesn't work, so perhaps over there we don't, because in reality it's a crossbreed between two types. He's not purely one or the other, but Nidman Parakin, but ne- nearly, n- but Merely, he's a nidme. He was produced by mother and father sheep, but he looks different. Maybe that's still okay. Or the militia, no, perhaps. No, there's no difference in a kalayim. Fact is, he's not presenting. Tashma, here comes a raya. Per sheol dominates, the Bryce says, cow births a goat looking offspring. Ain't poison. You cannot use it for pigeon. This is pretty obvious because technically he's a calf coming off a mother, and that's not suitable for Pidin Petachamar, which needs a se sheep or goat. But let's make a diuk. What does this imply for us? That if mother and offspring would be of the se variety, it would work, despite the difference in appearance. Ha! Oh, apparently, a Rachel sheep. She the Menes gave birth to a goat looking creature, Poitin, that can be used for Pidin. Check. Who's speaking? Mani, Ilam Rabelezer. Is Rabelezer speaking? It goes without saying. You could even use a real kalayim. So, of course, there's no point in this. Habi kalayim, not a prakina. You could even use a real kalayim. Apparently, this price is not a blazer. Because then it would just be obvious. El love Rabbanon. It must be Rabbanon speaking. Kalayim off, but Nidme is okay. No, loyalim the blazer. No, the price could certainly be a blazer here. If you go become Ashmon, the point of the price is to teach us uh, actually the first halacha, not the inference. The first halacha. Which was a para birthed a goat. The para shiodim and A's to teach us that it ain't poison. You can't use it. Why would I think otherwise? So, like, we shouldn't argue and say, Zilla basre the day. Focus on the offspring. The fact is, Vai A's malu, he looks like a full goat. And it works. No. The point of the price is, Ella Zilla he may follow the mother. Vai Eagle, the mother is a cow. The offspring is classified as a calf and therefore it doesn't work. Toshmai comes another raya regarding the status of a nidme for pidyon. Toshmai, the tani rabbi rashmol. Ezo kalayim. Give me an example of a kalayim which is unsuitable. Rachel Yodim and Ez. She birthed the goat whose father is a se. Okay, so it's a regular sheep. So father and mother were sheep, and the offspring is a goat. And that is kalayim, aviv se, if the father is a se, so father and mother are both the same, kalayim uwayu, labeling him as kalayim, nidmu is merely a nidma. In his appearance he defers, but he's not actually, el, or rather we have to revise the bride, ezo dami le kalayim, we have to insert a word. <laughs> What's an example of something which presents like kalayim? Not really, but he, halakhli is regarded as, Kalayim, the Shavu, Rabban Kilan, the Rabban, we regard as Kalayim. Okay, despite the fact that he's not really a product of a crossbreed. What's that example? Rachel Shiodim and Ez. So the mother and father, Baba said, the mother and father were sheep, and the offspring is a goat. And what does the Bryce say? He is disqualified. Now, disqualified for what purpose? To be brought as a carbon, to be used for Masa Behema, to be used for Pitin Petachamar. I mean, what? Lamai, regarding what? Ilokachim. Is it to disqualify him from being used as a carbon, regular carbon? Oilashlam. 
Well, there's no need for a Brisa to tell us that. I mean, that's the Pasuk. Mehechad and Memayit Kalayim, the same source, the same Pasuk, which excludes a real Kalayim from carbon. Also, Memayit Nidman. Nidman is also excluded. The Sadi of a Brisa. Shara Kesev. Pratla Kalayim. Or Ace Pratla Nidman. So the same Pasuk, which excludes a real crossbreed, also excludes a Nidman. There's no point in discussing it separately. Okay. Ilabchar. Is it regarding whether or not it's going to be Kaddish as a Bechar if it's a firstborn kosher animal? Well, uh, again, that we already know from um, from the other pasuk we had the other days, right? So the, the brayso which presents it as a rabbinic type of exclusion. If we're talking about korbanos, it's a pasuk. It's not Torah. If we're talking about bechar, again, that's a pasuk. Ach bechar shor, right? We had the other day. Amr Achmar Torah tells us ach bechar shor that offspring must appear like the mother. Achei hu shor bechar shor. The mother and the offspring have to appear the same. So it's not a rabbinic. Disqualification, that's a possible. Ella, next option, Le Maser, perhaps regarding Maser Bahama, to teach us that just like you can't, uh, just like the uh, a real Kalayim is exempt from Maser Bahama, right? When you have 10 animals, put in the pen, you count to 10, the 10th one is a car. Kalayim is excluded. Why is it excluded? Because the um, Master aim is compared to carbonates, and just like over there, Kalim and Idmah is out, same over here. Tachas, Tachas, Mikachim, Gomer. So it's learned from Xerah Shava, Tachas over here, Tachas, Mikachim. Just like by Kachim, Kalim is out, by uh, Master Mahim as well. And guess what? The same Xerah Shava will bring over the exclusion for Nidma as well. Just like by carbonates, you can't use a Nidma, Master Mahim either. So again, it's Minat Torah. So what does the Brisa mean? That Midra Bonon, the Nidma is out. One option remaining is Petachamar. El Petachamar. That although Kalayim is only disqualified in the Torah, but Nidme is disqualified in the Rabbana. That seems to resolve our question, which was whether you can use a Nidme. No, says Maloy Loy Master. Perhaps the, the Bryce is talking about regarding Master Behema use, not regarding uh, Pity and Petachamar. Well, that's been learned from Karbana, it disqualifies it based on the Pasuk. No, it's not a full-fledged um, Nidme. He appears somewhat like his mother, he has some resemblance. Now, let's just uh, picture the, the equation. We have a full spectrum, right? On one side we have animals for Karbana. We disqualify Kalayim, disqualify any sort of Nidme. On the other hand, we have Bukhair, disqualify a full Nidme, but if he's somewhat resembling the mother, Mikta Simonim, we had the other day, it works. Because it says Ach, Ach is, allows this case. Now we have the master behemoth right in the middle. Who should he be compared to? Maldatema, perhaps I can say, Havar, Havar, and Bukhair. Gamar. We should compare him to Bukhair. It says Havar there, Havar here. And partial resemblance is enough. Kamashbon, the point of the Baisa is to teach. No, we push them to the right. Tachas, tachas, mekachim, gomer. If we compare them to kachim, by way of exer, shavah, tachas, tachas, where even a partial nidme is disqualified. So bottom line is like this, regarding a nidme, for karbonis use, any nidme is possible. Regarding bachar, only a full nidme is possible, but a partial resemblance is enough. Regarding maser beme, we compare it to karbonis, Regarding Petah we asked, we haven't yet resolved. Now comes a brand new question. The following was asked. So you have an animal which had been a carbon. It was blemished, became disqualified. You redeemed it. It's now no longer truly, you know, Kaddish. Can I use him for Pidim Petah What's the question? I'll leave it to Rab Shimon. According to Rab Shimon, who told us that a uh, Firstborn donkey, although pidyon is required, but it does not affect the status in terms of Hanoi. You can still use it until you do the pidyon. According to that opinion, there's no question that you can use Psulia Magdashim for pidyon Petachamar. Why? Given the Amar, since he holds that the donkey's Mutabano can be used even prior to redemption, Chulunu. So he's really a regular animal. There's no issue redeeming him for the uh, Psulia Magdashim. Now, why would there be a problem at all? We'll see in a second. We'll see it from the other side. The question would apply according to the Rabbidu. According to the Rabbidu, the Amor says, Asr Bahana. The Petachamar is Asr to use pre-pidyan. 
evidently there's some Isser riding on that donkey, right? My. Now, what about flipping that donkey for the Psula Amidashim? Now, Psula Amidashim, although it was redeemed, but it's not fully, fully mundane. There are some restrictions on it. You can't share it. You can't work with it. You can only use it for its own sake, meaning you could shecht it and enjoy the meat. So there is a residual Kedusha lying on it. There is some Isser present on that animal. So perhaps you can't flip him for the Petah Hamar, which also has Isser, because basically you, what you're trying to do is transfer the Isser from the Hamar onto this Psalm Gdash, which already has pre-existing Isser. You can't do that. In Isser Chal Al Isser, you can't apply a double layer Isser. My, so what about uh, flipping it for the Hamar? Shall we say, given the Asr Bahano, since the Hamar is Asr, until the Pidyan, so, in effect, the pidyan, what the pidyan is doing is taking the isra from the chamar and placing it on the, sort of placing it on the on the, on the set. He's being exchanged for the isra, and then the isra, of course, dissipates. But perhaps the process entails transferring the isra from the chamar onto the set, which then dissipates. And that cannot be done if there's already a pre-existing isra on the set. In isra chalal isra, one isra can't land on the other. Saturated, it's over. Oidilma. On the other hand, given like Tavis Pidyane, ultimately, when you flip the uh, goat for the Hamar, you're not actually forbidden the goat. Given like Tavis Pidyane, it's not actually inheriting, it's not importing the Isra from the Hamar. Of course, you serve Almo. This process merely, what it does is it releases the Isra and dissipates it. So perhaps there's no issue. Using a psalamic doshan. You're not trying to add more Isra onto the, onto the goat. The goat's involvement is merely to dissipate the Isra from the Hamar. That's an interesting question. Can or can I not use a psalamic doshan for Pidim Bet Hamar? Amar of Mari, Bredar of Kana. Of course not. Is it little in your eyes how the terror relates to the psalamic doshan and calls it Tzviva Ayal? Mizutar is it small in your eyes by the Khsibuhu. This which it says regarding Psula Magdashim Katsivika Ayal, the Torah is comparing it to a Tsvi, a deer ayal. Regarding permissibility, right? But the fact is the Torah does equate the Psula Magdashim to these types of creatures which are technically animal, chayos, which are unsuitable for Petachamar. And that's the message. A Psula Magdashim has a similar status to a chaya and cannot be used for pidim chamar. Ma tzvi v'ayel, just like these animals, aim poitin, cannot be used for pidim pet chamar. Af, likewise, psula amigdasha, aim poitin, you can't redeem with psula amigdasha. So I think we're okay. That's a good point. Hashd as lachi, now that you've come to this clarity, let's turn the page. The Rav Shimon Nami tzvi v'ayel, ksibu, the same exact will apply to Rav Shimon. So in contrast, with our earlier contention that according to Pshim, there's no issue here, there is an issue. Tzviva'ayel Ksibu. The Torah relates the Pesulia Magdashim to Tzviva'ayel and makes it unsuitable for opinion, according to all Shittas. Next question, Yiboilu. The following was posed in Mesa Medrash. Ma'ul of Tzviz, Bebehem HaShviyas. What if you have a Shviyas animal? Now, of course, it didn't go out of the ground. It means to say that you had some Shviyas produce. Growing on Shemitah, which has Kedusha Shviyas. It must be um, consumed prior to the, uh, you know, the expiration date, the beer, when it's no longer available for the animals out in the wild, etc. So certain limitations, certain halachas, you can't destroy it, right? You can't do business with it. So he had extra uh, apples, and he uh, uh, switched it with his neighbor who had an animal. So now the animal assumes Kedusha Shviyas. And must be treated accordingly. Can one use that animal for pigeon? Says the Gemara. <coughs> vadai. It depends. If the Petachamar is a Vadai, was well, certainly a firstborn, which requires a true Pidyan, which will be handed to the Kayin, there's no question that cannot be done with the Behemah Shviz. Why? Lachila Marachmona. It already specifies. Shvi's material is meant exclusively for consumption. Not for commercial purposes, such as 
handing it to the coin in exchange for the... That's a commercial transaction. No way. Kiti Bailach. And uh, the Rashi explains here, he says, because when I'm switching it with the uh, donkey, I'm basically buying, <laughs> I'm taking Shvi's material, which now manifests in this Behemah Shvi's, right? And switching it for a Chamor, which is not Roy Lachila. Okay? So, yeah, that's a commercial transaction, that's business. It's not for consumption. The question will be suffix. Let's say I have a suffix, an uncertainty regarding my firstborn. Was it the first? Was it, you know, was it in the cave at first? Like we had, you know, earlier in the mission, right? Now, Valibu the Rabbi Shimon, there's no question again, the last day suffix, he doesn't hold up a suffix issue. Because he's the one that held that. Petachamar is mutter bahano, even pre pidyan So when there's a suffix, just leave it alone. Don't bother making any pidyan. So this whole thing is not relevant. Kontrab Shimon. The question will probably be the Rabbi Yudah, the Rabbi That when you have a Safek Patechmar, you have to address the possible Isra. You do. You have to swap it for a Seh, but you can keep the Seh. You don't have to give it to the Kain. So the Isra you have to address, but the monetary financial element of this, that uh, follows the regular system, right? Of Dine Maminis. All right, you want to extract money, you got to prove your case. Until the Kain can provide confirmation that this is really obligated, then until that point you can't take this. So you keep it. My. Okay, so once we establish that you do the pity but you keep it, can one use the uh, Shriya's animal for this purpose? My. Given the Mafresh Kalebu Atzmoi. On one hand, since he's um, setting aside, you know, the Tle doing the pity but he keeps the se, uh, perhaps that's not really considered a transaction. Ultimately, he's just keeping everything. La'achal karina bait. considered for food, for consumption. So although technically it was used to swap for the... But the fact is, it's all staying in the same pocket and... Uh, and uh, it's not considered having experienced a, a, a commercial transaction. That's one way to look at it. On the other hand, Oidilma kibin the kama de limafki surai. I mean, ultimately, until you release the Isser off that Hamar by way of swapping it with this Seh, Loi Mishri will not become Mutter. So ultimately, this Seh is serving as a catalyst for releasing the Isser off the Hamar by way of this swap. Because Chayra Dami, it's like doing a Chayra. Because the Seh is being used in a, in a function other than uh, actual consumption. It's being used as a flip, as an exchange for the Chamar. Tashmai comes at Raya, the one of Chizda, the Meshviz, Ein Poitim Basa Vadai, Aval Poitim Basa Sofik. You can't use it for a Vadai, but uh, yes, for a Sofik. It's not considered Schir. Rashi again highlights the difference because by the Vada you have to swap it plus give it to the Kain, that's Schir. It looks like he was a part of a real transaction. It was a flip, and that was given to the coin. It was an exchange. That's a aschera type of function. But if it's just all in house, I'm flipping it, but I'm keeping it here and eating. That's considered. That's not considered aschera. Interesting. Another Allah from Chizda regarding shmita. Behema shviyas purim and abchera. One has an animal which has shviyas status, and there's a firstborn there. It will not have Kedushas Bechira. Typically, a firstborn kosher animal is given to the Kayin. It's a carbon, parts of which are put on the Mizbech, the fats are burnt on the Mizbech. All this will not apply to a Shemitah, a Shemitah animal. Why? We'll see in a minute. The Chayivas Matanis, but if a person shechts his own Shemitah animal, he has to forward the Matanis, you know, there's Roya, the Chayayin, the Keva, the parts that belong to the Kayin, yeah. That applies even to this type of animal. Why? It's exempt from B'chorah. As we said, the Torah stipulates, Shmi's material is only for eating. Below the strip, not for destruction. Such as the B'chorah animal, which uh, has parts which are put on the Mizbeach for burning. It's exempt from that. 
You can't burn, so it's not a bachar. But chayvas matonis, it's chayvim matonis. Laachlam not karina be. Although you're obligated to give part to the coin, but he eats it. It's considered laachlam. And it applies here as well. Maybe here comes a kasha. Are you saying that something which has an element of destruction to it is exempt from, does not apply to shvius, shvius animal? So what about a shvius dough? Maybe here comes a kasha. Oichel is a shvius. For one, partakes. He eats a part of a dough comprised of shmita flour. Ad shaloyhur machalasa prior to separating the chal. Chay misa, it's considered tevel, it's chay misa. Why is it even chay and chal? You know what happens to chal that becomes tummy? You have to burn it. So there is a, a potentially a, a destruction element within this. It should not apply to shmita material. Vamai, why? Kim and matamya. Since if the chal portion becomes tummy, basrefi, you have to burn it. That's inconsistent with the primary function of Shemitah material. L'achla, Amr Achman, Torah stipulates it's meant for eating. Well, it's straight enough for burning. Answer is, Shani Acha. The Chsil Deir Seichem. The Pasuk by Chala stipulates Deir Seichem. For all your generations, that's uh, coming to cover even Shemitah. Tanam, we find the same in the Brisa. Menayin lo Echlam, he says, Shvi is how do we know that if a person eats shvita dough before chala was removed, there is chayiv misa? Because of this pasuk. Okay, so that supports rochizes halach. That supports the answer we gave. Okay, believe what we know. Now the question is, well, then let's learn from there. Just like by the dough, it's chayiv and chala, despite having a destruction element within it, we ignore that. Aspect the same should be regarding an animal. Shmita animal should have din of bechor, despite the fats and whatever that are, are slated for burning on the mizbeach. No, there's a huge difference between the two. Says the Gemara, Hasam ikar laachila. In contrast to the dough, its primary function and purpose is for consumption. If you're lucky enough that the challah that you separate from the dough is going to be retained in tahara and not going to become tainted, you're going to eat it. The kind will eat it. It's meant for consumption, not destruction. So unless it gets tame, it's full, uh, fully suitable for eating. Hacha ikal as opposed to the fats of the bechayr animal. Initially, it's it's meant for burning on the mizbeach. That's its primary plan, primary program, right? It doesn't work with, with the shemitah material, which is not meant for destruction. The son of Lekai, the mission concluded, the animal owner decided to forward the actual donkey to the kain. The coin must first make a pidyan, just like the Israel would have to, and then he can keep the rest. But Tanina, so our Mishnah is, is a raya, a support laha, to the following. Tan Rabban, we learned in the Brice. Israel, Shail, Petach, Mer, Psech, Beisai. Okay, so Israel had the Petach, Mer. Varmele, a coin, Neoli. Coin says, you know, why, why bother with the, the pidyan? I'll take care of it. Give it to me. Vani, if they, I'll take care of it. Can you? No. Raise a late You can't give it to him. Unless the uh, the coin uh, did the pidya in, in the presence of the uh, of the Israel. Amar of Nachman, Amar Rabba Baravua. What do we learn from this brisa? As I said, Meres. We learn from here. Nech should do. Hakayhanu pidur chamoyim. We suspect Kayhan to uh, perhaps not follow through <laughs> and do a proper pidya. Perhaps, you know, they have this uh, mindset. Look, in any case, the pigeon goes to us. What's the point of even making the pigeon? Just keep the whole thing. We can't trust them on it unless we see them doing the pigeon in front of us. Pshita says the moral, obviously. What's Rabba Bar, uh, Barabu adding to the, to the Brisa, which said that you can't give it to him unless he does a pigeon in front of you? Obviously, it's because we suspect him of... Uh, Non-compliance. Perhaps the Brisa, where we suspect him, is only when the Chazaka has been established that the um, that he he disregarded the uh, pidya in requirement. The Mikri it happened that he did it. but otherwise, 
We don't assume that he'll uh, disregard it. Kamash mon demayr bayatera. Comes Rav Nachman, the name of Rav Avot, tell us, no. This halach applies to any kind, any kind in the world. We're concerned that will be Meira Heter. He'll, uh, he'll justify it by, by saying, look, in any case, what's the difference? You make the pity, you give it to me anyway, so skip the whole pity process. Just give me the Hamar straight out. And of course, he's wrong because, you know, just like by Tevel produce, although the Truma goes to the coin, he has to first separate the Truma, make Truma on the Tevel, even his own Tevel, and then can eat the Truma. Same thing over here. There's an Isra, there's a requirement, right, to make the pidyon, whether you're a coin, whether uh, right, uh, Israel's firstborn has to be redeemed. The truth is that the Kayin's firstborn donkey is exempt, as we had back in the mission, but here we're talking about a firstborn donkey born in the, under the Yisrael ownership, right? While still in possession of the Yisrael. So you can't just take the short route and give the donkey to the Kayin and that's it. He has to make the pidyon. Okay, so that is consistent with our mission as well. That if the Israel should choose to just give it to the coin, he can't use it unless it makes it make, unless he carries out the pigeon. After which he can keep both the donkey and the sit. Okay, so just a quick chazora of the Gemara until now. We had the Mishnah, a long Gemara, giving us the parameters of what may or what may not be used for pigeon petachamar. The starting point is the word se. Petach motif to be se. We connect to Karm Pesach. It needs to be a true se. From kvasim, from izim, sheep, goats. Can't be a chaya, can't be a, you know, from a cow family, can't be shechted, can't be trefa. Nor kilayim, according to Blazak is okay. But age, gender, and, um, you know, tamim is not required because tifta at tifta is marba, even those. Okay, as long as it conforms to the, you know, primary element of Karim Pesach, you're okay, even if you don't have all the other, you know, secondary elements. Now, what about a Ben Pekua? Hmm, that was a whole Shaila, a whole Machlaikis, right? So, going to Rabbanon, that Ben Pekua does not need Shechita. Can it be used or not? That was a Shaila, Machlaikis. We had Nidma, we had a Shaila by Nidma, we had a Shaila by Psalm Makdash, and concluded that it's not suitable. We got a Bema Shemitah, we said uh, Vada, Pedachamar uh, cannot, and Asafi could. And we had a Chidush that even a Kayan who imports the Pedachamar uh, from the Israel must first make Pidim before use. Says the mission, who is responsible? Okay, so you uh, redeem the firstborn donkey, and now the goat disappears. Who's responsible? Is the Israel done deal? Or perhaps it's not complete until he delivers it to the coin. Hamafresh pidim pedachamor. So he put aside the uh, pedachamor, he made the pidim mace, and the goat died before delivered to the coin. Rabbi Eimer, you haven't done the job. Chayav Bachar Yusay, he's responsible. Just like the five dollars you have to give for the pitin petar, uh, uh, sorry, the pitin haben, kechamish shlam shel ben, just like over there. Rashi brings the Gemara later. You chay bach rice until you deliver the money to the kain. Until it's delivered, it's not done. Likewise over here. So he compares pitin petar to pitin haben. Vachacham ayim ein chayavin bachar yusay. The owner is not chayev bach rice, and they compare it to kipitin master shein. Just like when you redeem master shein material, the money goes lost. It's lost. Hey, the Rishon Betzadik, they testified. Alpidim betachem bar shemeish and kanach and klum. And according to the Shittas Chachamim, Pidim died. The Kain has no claim. Now let's say meis petachem bar. Let's flip around the equation. We did a Pidim, and prior to delivery to the Kain, the donkey dies. Well, as I mean, cover. Well, it says the process was not yet completed. In which case, the redemption wasn't yet carried out fully. And the uh, donkey is Asr Bahano, you have to bury it. Umutr, Banasa Shatla, and the owner can now enjoy the Tla. It doesn't belong to the coin because the uh, redemption process wasn't really carried through. I don't entirely cover, tell the coin, they say no. Redemption was done. Donkey is yours to keep, you don't have to bury it. And the sheep, you gotta send off to the coin, FedEx. Umar Vyasa, my time to the Blazer. What's the Blazer's reason? That the farmer 
is responsible for the uh, for the goat until delivered to the coin, the chsiv, because in the same pasuk we have a reference to this pidyon and the pidyon haben, the chsiv as pade sifte, and we make an equation. Ma'ab charadam chay b'charisa, just like the father of this firstborn son is responsible for that money until delivered to the coin. Apuchar be'matmeya, likewise, the uh, redemption of the donkey, chay b'charisa. Well, if you're comparing to the Bukhar Adam, compare it all the way. So just like the firstborn son, you can enjoy his company, his mutter ba'ano, even pre-redemption. Likewise, you can enjoy the Bukhar Be'emetmei even before redemption. Right? So it should be so. So perhaps the answer is yes. Well, clearly, in our Mishnah, we see the answer is no. Because that Hamar that dies is off-limits. But now we have in the Mishnah, Mace, Peta, Hamar, Blazo, and Mayukav, you have to bury it. Mayukav, why bury? Lav, the Asubana, apparently because he's off limits. No, Allah, you cover the Bukharadam. Not because of Israel, no, because it's a, a mitzvah, a din to bury, just like by a person. You bury a person, you bury an animal, a, a Hamar, because of that connection to the firstborn son. Allah, Adam, Bukhar, the Bayakvura. Pasha, the Bayakvura. So the reason why you're burying the firstborn donkey is because you're comparing him to the firstborn son. So, it's the firstborn son element that's requiring kvura and being carried over to the Petah Hamar. Pasha, Lebe, Kvura, regular son, second son, not a Bukhar. It doesn't need to be buried. Of course he does. So, it's not the firstborn element that's triggering the kvura. So, you can't say that would be the reason for burying the Petah Hamar. We've already another question. We have a clear Bryce that according to Belezer, a Petah Hamar is Asr Bahano, prior to Pidyan. Why tiny? Why do Rabbi Lazar? Lazar agrees with Yisrael. Sheishloi, Suffolk, Peter, Chamar, B'Sech, Pesach. Yisrael has a Suffolk, Peter, Chamar. What do you do? Shema, for Shetla, Bushaloi. You've got to do the Pidyan. But you keep the Pidyan. And that's only because, why do you even bothering with the Pidyan? Because apparently the donkey is us or until Pidyan. So that really reckons our question. Well, if we're comparing the Peter, Chamar to the Bukhar Adam, why is there Israel no? By Petah Hamar, which is something that's not there by Pidyan Naben. Elam Rav, I'll tell you why. For some elements we compare them, for some we don't. Elam Rav, the Pasuk says, Ach Pade Tifte. In that Pasuk, which relates to Adam and Bukhar, it says, Pade Sifte. Regarding Lefdiyah, he cast, regarding redemption discussion, I compared the two. I equated the Hamar to the Adam, regarding whether you're Chayib Achrayis, etc. But below the Bachrayis, not regarding other matters. Now, although a uh, firstborn son is mutabah, no, but the Betah is Asabah. It's not an awesome, I have a Mishnah. Which says like this. It's actually a price. Ha'erchen v'shatan. Erchen is where a person pledges another person's value, set value established by the Torah, will be giving that to the Beis HaMikdash. V'shatan, over there, it's based on the time of the pledge. His current age current status. Okay, so if the person you pledged about is now 10 years old, that's uh, what you go with. B'Shatan, the time of pledge. O Ben, regarding Pidna Ben, Achash Shemir. That requirement, that obligation, is only activated once the uh, child hits 30 days. Pidna Petach Amar Altar. Pidna, the firstborn donkey, gets activated immediately upon birth. Really? Upidim petamar la altar? Is that so? As this first brisa says, that petachamar happens right away. Well, I mean, we have another brisa that you have to wait 30 days for petachamar. Aim be'erachan no pidim abed ubin azirus. U petachamar petim shloishim. The magic number 30 applies all over. It applies to erachan. The first uh, set value on a human is 30 days and up. Pidna Ben, you have to wait until the child is 30. But Nazirus, the minimum, you know, Nazirus time frame is 30 days. Petachamar also needs to be 30 days old. We see it on the Oilam, and, you know, it goes on unlimited. I mean, you can make a very long Nazirus, you can be pointed to the sun even past 30, but the starting point is 30. So we have a stira. Brysa number one says Petachamar is the altar, right away upon birth. Brysa two says 30 days minimum. 
Amar of Nachman, Loy Marashim Pode Pode. The second price is just saying, look, if you do it right away, it works. But ideally, you should wait 30 days. Just like Pidin Haben. Machlal de Bnoi in Pode in Pode. Apparently, the price is saying Petachamar can work right away, but Pidin Haben clearly has to wait 30 days. And even if they do it before 30 days, it doesn't work. The person redeems his firstborn son a week after birth, it doesn't work. But we have a halacha that does work. The person does Pidin Haben within 30 days. Rabbi Amabnei Padre, it works. So you see, it does. Well, not entirely. La Vitmar, we have already explained on that. Amar Rav, Rav explains, Kuli Amar, all agree with me, actually, Amabnei Padre, if he insists that he wants the Pidin to take effect right away, it doesn't work. Because it's not yet time. It's too early in the game. What he could do is set aside the money, make the Pidin. So he's doing the act early, but it will only take effect past 30, that he can do. As opposed to Petach Amor, there is no such absolute requirement. Although ideally he should wait for 30 days, but if he does it earlier, it works. Rav Sheshis Amar, he has a different shot. What's the problem? Price number one speaks about Petach Amor immediately upon birth. Price number two speaks about 30 days. Rav Sheshis Amar, Loimar. Rav Sheshis Amar, Loimar, Shein Oiverlov. Really, the mitzvah ha- happens right away upon birth. The second price just means to say that he's not going to be considered in violation. He hasn't really violated until he waits 30 days. No, oh, that's too far. That's, you know, that's already considered in, in violation, but the actual pigeon can happen right away. Must have run I have a question on you. From a third price. Mitzvah is the Petach Amar is meant to be redeemed within 30 days. In the past 30 days, he has two options, either redeem or chop off the head. My love, let's assume what the Bryson means. The Bryson means to say, is wait, it's a mitzvah to wait until he's somewhat developed, at least 30 days old. In contrast to Rav Sheshis, who says you have to do the pity right away, Lord, no, that's not what the Bryson means. You meant to be put within 30 days. Soon after birth, get going. But if you wait past 30 days, you are violated. If that's what the Bryson means, that you can really do Pidyan or Arifa right now. At 30, it triggers a violation. So the wording of the Bryson is a bit difficult because the Bryce should have said, Mekan Ve'elach, past 30 days, Oy Poy Deyu, Oy Oy Ver Elohim Boy. They should have said it like that. Either you quickly do a pity or you're trans- in transgression. Instead of just saying, well, you have two options, either Redeem or Arifa, the Bryce should have emphasized that you're getting Avera now. Elama Rava, Leikashi, Parab Lazar, the Makshi, Harabana, the Makshi. Let me give you a very simple resolution to this apparent contradiction, not a contradiction at all. Bryson number one, which says that pity happens right away, that's like the Rabban of Makshi. They don't compare donkey to Adam. According to them, there's no reason to wait for 30 days, which is a requirement by Adam. By Hamar, you do it right away. Ha Rabbalezer the Makshi. Second Bryson is Rabbalezer, who compares animal to human. And the 30 day minimum before you make a pity. Continues the Gemara. Loy Rod to live, Daisa Erfam Achirov. Okay, if the farmer is unwilling to do pidyon, behead it from behind, the kaiver, and you bury the uh, dead donkey. Mrs. Hapti, Akademis, Mrs. Arifa. Truly, redemption takes priority. It's uh, preferred over Arifa as the Pasa. Clearly puts Arifa as second option. If you don't redeem, you do Arifa. On this topic, Mrs. Hapdiya. person owns a Jewish maidservant. Ideally, you should do you, you should marry her before. That takes priority over facilitating her redemption. Shinemar, once again, the Pasuk puts one before the other. If he hadn't married, then he facilitates her redemption. One more on this list is Yibam and Chalitza. Which one takes priority? Mitzvah Sayyibam comes before Kodemis. Mitzvah Chalitza. A fellow's brother married, died childless. Ideally, he should marry the uh, 
widow before doing chalitza. That's in the good old days when they were of higher, holier material. Very shayna shayi b'skal and shayi mitzvah over there. We say Yibam comes first because our intention was for the sake of mitzvah. But nowadays, standards dropped and the intention isn't so pure. So now the Chachamim advised that Chalitza should happen before Yibam. Amru, they say mitzvah is Chalitza, Kaidemes, let's ask Yibam, we encourage Chalitza brought before Yibam. Mitzvah is Hakulah Ba'adain, Kaidem Kaladam. If a fellow you know, donates uh, an animal, whatever, <coughs> Unkosher animal to the base and make treasury, treasury treasury fund, right? So who's going to be uh, called to redeem for who gets priority regarding redemption? Mitzvah sagula ba'adain, the owner of that, uh, the donor, who couldn't call adam, she comes before other people. Shenamar vim lo yigayel, v'nim kabel kecha. It won't be geula, which means that the actual owner who donated will not come and redeem it. Then you sell it off. And Tesis adds another reason, based on Gemara and Erechen, there's another reason, because he adds a fifth to the uh, total amount, so the Hegdash will be gaining on him. Therefore, he takes priority. All the best to you and Hatzlachara.